Hey guys, welcome back to the Wednesday vlog. I'm really excited because we have a special guest with us here today. This is Brittany Gobble. You guys might remember she worked with me last year to make this really awesome ball python calendar. Tell them a little bit about our plans for this one. It's be really cool. Well, the last year, those calendars sold out so fast. So thank you all, first of all, for all that support. That was, we really appreciate that. It was a fun thing to do and we're glad the community enjoyed it. So we decided to do it again this year. We have all new snakes, of course, and you have made some incredible different props and ideas. You'll see some of them in this video because she's here and filming a lot of new ideas with some of the newest combos. It's really, really exciting. Yeah, I, I can't wait. Some of these last year, we kind of, you know, most of the photos were a little more standard. We're gonna kind of try to go over the top. We gotta try to top last year because that's just kind of how we are. <laughs> be so fun. Yeah, I, well, I'm excited. And I'm also working, just in case anybody's interested, working on a hognose calendar with just the Western hognose where we do the ball pythons, you know, kind of a, a side thing. Awesome, we'll try to make those available at the same time this fall. We're really excited about it. Let's jump into the video. So how do you think we could get it on here to where it looked like the Kraken was taking down the ship? So. You put it through so I don't get your snake stuck. is we got a lot of composites there. So like I got some of her, some of it. Head swaps in humans right. and snakes. Right. Sometimes it's like if you nail one body, but the other one has now turned away, it's nice to be able to go ahead and swap out the snakes. And if the image is pretty much exactly the same, except for one thing, like one of the snakes, it's fairly easy to change out snakes. Perfect. That looks cool. I think we got it. A lot of Michaels and Hobby Lobby. Sometimes I'll go to the antique stores and sometimes I will go to online, like Etsy, if there's a very specific prop. I did a steampunk shoot one time. So I needed like the goggles and some little fake guns and some stuff like that. And I had to have those custom made on, on Etsy. But typically, almost everything I use comes from Hobby Lobby as far as props. Oh yes, I had a friend come down and she's done some, she's an award-winning photographer in Canada. But for the most part, it's just a lot of trial and error. Taking thousands of pictures until I get exactly what I wanted. And then I'd be like, okay, that worked or that didn't work. So a lot of nights spent watching YouTube videos, yeah. a lot of YouTube. Yes, yes, I did a lot of, a lot of cat photography. And it's so funny because a lot of times people say, well, which is worse? Is it cats or snakes? And it's not really one is better or worse. It's a matter of knowing how to work with each one. So with cats, you have two chances to get your images. You either do it really fast while they're still kind of freaking out, like, wait, what is this? And then you're like, click, 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 and you're done in 15 seconds. Otherwise, cats are very stubborn and you have to out stubborn them. So you just wait and you keep putting them back over and over and over. So a little bit of that kind of came over to the snakes. Like you could see with the ball pythons, you just have to gently keep putting them in position. And you still, let me put this out there too, you still have to know their limits. Some animals are just, if they're uncomfortable, if their body is like they're, you know, not calming down at all, you're not seeing the movements of them trying to get away, sometimes it's better to just put the animal away. You don't want to overly stress them out. A photo is not worth that. But with some animals, they're just, it's a new thing, lights, a lot going on. You just be patient. You know, you can get that image. You just got to be very patient and wait them out. <laughs> I decided when I started doing photography that for the most part, this wasn't gonna be my business. I mean, sure, if I've, I've made some money at it and I, I've enjoyed that, but that's not really my focus. I wanted to do this for fun and it's hard to do that if you have clients. So at this point, you know, my husband likes to joke, he's like, you can't afford to hire her <laughs> because I have to really want to photograph the animals 
in that collection or to be something like, you know, I photographed a gentleman's collection of alligators in Florida. And then I went to Ohio and did venomous. So I got to do cobras and the gaboon vipers. So for me, it's more about, I want a challenge and I want to photograph different animals. I'm working with Western Hog Nose, mainly ball pythons, of course, most people know that. I recently got into the blood pythons, so I have a small collection of blood pythons and two Borneos. We have three rainbow boas and then uh, some of the boa constrictors, BCI. Okay, so it's kind of like a love-hate thing because <laughs> the ball pythons can be kind of boring when they do like this or they coil into a perfect ball. But on the flip side, that also means that they hold still nicely for a good photo. The bloods don't hold still. They're just like, they, they're out of there. Every time I go to photograph them, they're just, I'm like, really? So they're fun, same, as the, same with the boas. They will pose more. You can get a lot more unique draping and poses because they're like, okay, let me check out what's going on. Whereas a ball is like, forget this, I'm out of here, you know? So again, it's kind of a love-hate. I guess it depends on my energy level. Look how pretty you can be. You can be so pretty. Okay, so I'm really bad. Sometimes it can take me like months. I, I think I still have some photos from the last trip up here that I haven't had time to edit. Usually if there's one that like, I'm very, very over the top excited about, like the, the Kraken ones, I've been really looking forward to that one. I will probably edit some of those this weekend. And then of course, if somebody, if I'm going to somebody's place and they're like, oh, that's gonna be great because I need this image for a magazine or this image for, yeah, it's, I had somebody do some for signs for a facility. So I will edit those much faster than I'm going to edit, you know, certain other photos. But I tend to be a slacker when it comes to editing. I've got family vacations that haven't been edited in like five years. So we're gonna try two different sets of snakes on this one. So we're gonna go full color, like full summertime, let's blow it out. But then we're also gonna do some xanthic because it'd be fun to see that. What's the big word? Juxt juxtaposition. <laughs> I love it when they behave. Come on, come on, be an angel. And if you're photographing animals, really make sure that they are secure. Like this is like one of those fun experiments when you, you like do photography is I wouldn't have thought going super color would be cool. I was actually thinking going the opposite direction and doing black and white or grayscale, but in the end I like this. I think it's like, I'm not moving now. Of course, you know it's only a matter of time it's gonna slip down now that it's uncoiling. As far as snakes go, I would like to do more venomous because I only have to do a few of those. I would enjoy doing some copperheads and some things like that. I would like to try more natural photography. I would like to go herping and do the photography. Yes, I think that'd be amazing Like, because you have to really work with what's there and I like a challenge. So you don't get to plan it, you're just like, let's so wing it. Going on a full, a full trip yes, hit me up, hit me up. You want a photographer? It's like an event photographer now. <laughs> I'd say that's probably what, what I'm most interested in trying to photograph at, at this point. I'd also, because I have a small collection of hognose, I have some nice ones, but I have small, a small collection, I'd love to go and do somebody's collection of hognose, you know, and kind of get to see it more of the morphs. Well, that's it. We're so excited. She's going home with some awesome, awesome footage and I can't wait to see what the pictures come out. Most people think it's really easy to do this. People can kind of see what goes into it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun. I mean, let's be, everybody sees that part and that is true. It is fun. I love coming down here because I get to play with incredible snakes. And yes, I know a lot of people are jealous about that. Um, but it's, it takes hours. I mean, we've been doing this. I think we got here at like 11 this morning. So, I mean, we've been at this for a long time. You know, your back starts hurting because you're bending over, reposing and reposing and, yeah. you know, waiting for the snakes to kind of. Yeah, they don't really know what they're supposed to be doing. And <laughs> no. it's uh, not easy to communicate that. No. But it's a lot of fun. The Indian product is really, really cool. So tell us about where to find your socials and how to follow you. 
Um, Gobbles Reptiles on Instagram and Facebook both. And I'm working on a website, but that's not quite yet. Morse Market is Gobbles Reptiles as well. Be sure to tune in next time for Hetflix number 100. We're really excited about it. We'll see you on Friday.